from the Gorant Law. My research advisor is Professor Nilesh P. Mehta. Uh, we both are from EP department. So his presentation, I'm going to discuss panel allocation and just throw feedback overhead in the underlay T2D networks. This is an extended version of the ICC talk. In device to device, D2D communication, devices communicate directly with one another. This is unlike the conventional cellular communication where the cellular users communicate uh, through uplink and downlink via the base station. <clears throat> uh, this has so many advantages. So uh, it offloads traffic from the base station. Uh, it reduces transmission power because there is no uplink and downlink. And uh, it also reduces transmission latency. Uh, we focus in underlay D2D wherein the D2D users reuse the uplink subchannels of the cellular users. So this improves the spatial reuse, which can improve spectral efficiency. However, it causes interference between the cellular users and the D2D users. From the figure, you can see that cellular users uh, interfere with the D2D link and the D2D transmitter interfere with the cellular links. So to get the benefits of spectral efficiency, it is essential that we manage the interference between the cellular users and the D2D users. <coughs> So we consider the following system model. So we consider underlay D2D system. So we consider N uplink subchannel. Similarly, there are N cellular users are there, and each of the cellular user is allocated with a, with a subchannel. So without loss of generality, we assume that cellular user one is assigned with subchannel one, cellular user two is scheduled with subchannel two, and so on. So we consider M D2D page. And the PD is the uh, transmit power of the D2D transmitter and PC is the transmit power of the cellular user. So we have interference from the neighboring cell users. So these are the associated uh, corresponding channel gains. <clears throat> For example, uh, <clears throat> HJJ is the uh, channel gain between the D2D transmitter and D2D receiver. And uh, um, uh, GJI is the interference from the cellular user I to D2D page J on subchannel I, and HBI is the interference from cellular user I to the base station on subchannel I. So, our key focus is uh, to improve the spectral efficiency further by allocating multiple D2D pages per subchannel. Uh, this improves spatial reuse, which can improve spectral efficiency. However, it also causes an additional source of interference called inter D2D interference, the interference between the D2D page. So which can decrease the D2D rate, which in turn can decrease the spectral efficiency. So there is this trade off between the spatial reuse and inter D2D interference. So to address this trade off, we limit the number of D2D pages per subchannel to K. So larger the K, higher the spatial reuse and larger the inter D2D interference. So essentially, this system parameter K captures the uh, trade-off between the spatial reuse and inter D2D interference. We address this trade-off uh, in our pro problem formulation. So we consider the following practical uh, CSI model called a partial CSI model. So in this model, the D2D receiver DRX knows the CSI of DTX to DRX link and the cellular user to DRX link because it is the re receiver in these links. Uh, it only knows the uh, statistics of the inter D2D interference and intercell interference because knowing the statistics of these uh, these links, uh, knowing the CSI of these links will incur uh, significant signaling overhead. Similarly, the base station knows the CSI of uh, cellular user to BS link and DTX to BS link because it is the receiver in these links. So this CSI model is unlike the full CSI models assumed in the literature wherein the base station knows the CSI of all the links in the system, uh, which is practically infeasible and which also incurs huge signaling overhead. Despite the uh, partial CSI model that we consider, we propose a feedback model wherein the D2D receiver can compute a SSINR with a reliability guarantee and feeds it back to the base station. The DRX computes an SINR estimate TIJ epsilon D such that the D2D SINR is more than the SINR estimate with a pre-specified probability 1 minus epsilon D. <clears throat> uh, upon simplifying, we get the SINR estimate in terms of the 
inverse CDF of the intercell and inter D2D interference. Uh, the DRX then quantizes the SINR estimate using a qubit quantizer and feeds back that information to the base station. The base station uses the feedback information to assign a rate of CIJ for D2D paid J on subchannel I. So we also ensure minimum rate for all the cellular users. So the uh, SINR of the cellular user is given as follows, where in the numerator we have the cellular user link uh, si signal power. In the denominator we have interference from the D2D pipes transmitting on the same subchannel and IB is the uh, intercell inter interference at the base station. So we want to ensure a minimum rate of uh, R min for cellular user uh, with a probability of 1 minus epsilon, epsilon C. Uh, this is because of the uh, randomness due to the intercell interference IB. So this minimum rate constraint uh, translates to an upper limit on the interference the cellular user link can tolerate from the D2D page transmitting a subchannel I. So here WIJ is the interference from D2D page transmitting a subchannel I and PI is a function of the minimum rate and uh, the pre-specified probability 1 minus epsilon, epsilon C. <clears throat> Our goal is uh, to maximize D2D sum rate while allocating multiple D2D pairs per subchannel while also ensuring minimum quality of service for the cellular users. So the problem uh, uh, is formulated as follows. So we want to maximize the D2D sum rate summed across all the subchannels across all the D2D pairs subject to uh, at most k d2d pairs are assigned per subchannel. Here k is the system parameter and k captures the uh, trade-off between the spatial reuse and inter d2d interference. And we also ensure minimum rate for the cellular user. Again, so bi is the upper limit on the interference from the on the cumulative interference from the d2d pairs. And we assign at most one subchannel per d2d pair. So here xij is the binary assignment variable which is 1 if D2D pair J is assigned to subchannel I, otherwise it is 0. So this problem is known to be NB hard. And to address this problem, so we propose an algorithm called relaxation pruning algorithm. So RP, LP, uh, RPA is a uh, uh, LP rounding technique, linear program uh, relaxation and rounding technique, and it is an adaptation of motion Tardos algorithm. Uh, RPA has four steps. In step 1, we relax the binary constraints and solve the uh, linear program LP. In step two, based on the LP solution, we construct a bipartite graph. In step three, uh, we find maximum weighted matching for the constructed bipartite graph. In step four, uh, we prune the matching solution in step three to make the solution feasible. We now look at these steps one by one. Uh, in step one, First and foremost, we discard any d 2 by j if its interference wij is more than the interference threshold bi. For all the other remaining assignment variables, we relax the int binary constraint to between 0 and 1. This makes the problem p into a linear program shown on the right hand side. So we then solve, the, uh, solve this LP uh, using the standard solvers. Let x tilde ij be the optimal solution for this LP. In step two, we use the LP solution to construct a bipartite graph between the D2D pairs and the subchannels. So we will we'll illustrate this uh, with an example for subchannel I. For subchannel I, compute NI, where NI is the ceiling on the summation of the uh, summation across the D2D pairs, the LP solution associated with I. So create NI copies of the NI virtual copies of the subchannel I, I1, I2, to so on, I and I. So we then arrange the D2D pairs in the decreasing order of their interference to the base station. So here we use order statistic notation. Uh, w, uh, w, uh, the bracketed one denotes D2D pair with highest interference, and bracketed two denotes uh, D2D pair D2D pair with second largest interference to the base station, and so on. Uh, for example. Let the uh, associated LP solution be uh, 0.3 for order D2D1, uh, 0.5 for order D2D2, 0.4 for order D2D3, 0.6 for order D2D4, 0.3 for order D2D5. <clears throat> we construct edges between virtual copy I1 and D2D pairs starting from order D2D1 such that the sum of the LP solution is 1. 
so we we take point 3 from order d to d1 we take point 5 from order d to d2 we take a fraction of a fraction point 2 from order d to d3 such that the sum of the lp solution is 1 so we create uh, edges between virtual copy i1 and order d to d1 2 and 3 similarly uh, for virtual copy i2 we take a fraction 0.2 from order d to d3 we take 0.6 from order d to d4 we take a, a fraction uh, 0.2 from order d to d5 such that the sum of the lp solution is 1 uh, again uh, we construct edge with between virtual copy i2 and uh, order d to d3 4 and 5 so again for the remaining point 1 we we construct a, an edge between order d to d5 and virtual copy i3 uh, here uh, the weight of the edges between any virtual copy and a d to d pair is the uh, rate of that d to d pair for the for sub channel i we repeat the same uh, this process of constructing uh, bipartite graphs for all the sub channels to come up with a uh, final bipartite graph uh, with virtual sub channels uh, virtual copies of all the sub channels on one side and d2d pairs on the other side please note that a d2d pair can be connected to more than uh, one virtual sub channel we then apply a maximum weighted matching on this bipartite graph to come up with a one to one matching uh, between the d to d pairs and sub channels we apply kunmung trace algorithm to obtain this one to one matching between the d to d pairs and sub channels so this matching solution is such that a d to d pair is connected to at most uh, one virtual sub channel and a virtual sub channel is connected to at most one d to d pair so this matching solution gives us the assignment between the uh, sub channels and d to d pair so a d to d pair is connected to virtual copies of a sub channel are assigned to that sub channel for example d to d pairs 1 and 3 are assigned to sub channel n and d to d pairs 2 and m are assigned to sub channel 1 in step 4 so we prove the matching solution obtained from step 3 because the matching solution in step 3 may not satisfy this interference constraint so those sub channels that does not satisfy this interference constraint are proved so the pruning step is as follows let sub channel i be the sub channel that does not satisfy this prune, this interference constraint so a virtual copy i1 is matched to d to d pair k1 i2 to k2 i n i to k n i here uh, these uh, the matching solution is such that these uh, these d to d pair uh, the interference of these d to d pairs are in the decreasing order if uh, the rate of uh, d to d pair k1 is more than the sum of the rates of d to d pairs k2 to k n i then only d to d pair k1 is assigned to sub channel i otherwise d to d pairs k2 to k n i are all allocated to sub channel i we do this for all the infeasible sub channels which gives us gives us the final feasible allocation between the d to d pairs and the sub channel we now give, uh, specify the performance guarantee of rpa one interesting aspect of rpa is that it gives theoretical guarantee about its performance specifically when uh, k equal to 1 uh, it gives optimal d to d sum rate when k, k greater than 1 it achieves at least half of the optimal d to d sum rate rpa has polynomial time complexity it is of the order of n cube m cube where m is the number of d to d pairs n is the number of sub channels now look at a uh, few numerical results in this figure uh, we plot uh, d to d sum throughput uh, as a function of d to d assignment limit uh, for rpa and ccsa and uh, we compare rpa and ccsa we compare rpa with ccsa cardinality constraints of channel assignment algorithm and exhaustive search and ssa sub modular uh, semi orthogonal sharing as algorithm <coughs> ccsa uh, fo follows sub modular maximization based approach which also has its own guarantee uh, that it achieves at least one third of the optimal d2d sum rate ssa assigns at most one d2d pair per sub channel we see that uh, rpa in blue is very close to exhaustive search in black and it uh, it performs better than ccsa in red and it significantly outperforms ssa in green and the maximum maximum sum throughput is obtained when k equal to 3 this figure uh, we plot uh, d to d sum throughput of rpa and ccsa as a function of number of d to d pairs m we see that uh, rpa in blue uh, significantly uh, 
performs better than CCSA in red. And the D2D sum throughputs increase as the number of D2D pairs M and the feedback resolution Q increases. And moreover, the, perf uh, the performance gap increases as M and Q increases. Conclude, uh, resource allocation in practice has to be done with uh, practically feasible models such as partial CSI models. So, uh, despite the limited CSI models, uh, uh, we propose a feedback model wherein uh, the D2D user, uh, we give guarantees about the uh, rates of the D2D users. Our proposed algorithm RPA has polynomial time complexity and it, it achieves a theoretical guarantee of at least half of the optimal uh, D2D sum rate and numerically it has near optimal performance. Uh, for more details, please look at our conference ICC paper, which is titled Subchannel Allocation with Low Computational and Signaling Complexity in 5GD2D Networks. So this concludes the presentation. Thank you for your attention.